What is up scrub fam pat here with another video today i want to talk about what i think are the six most impactful cards coming out of series nine before i get into that though got to give a shout out to the sponsor alec pastrana bearded collectibles best shop owner on the planet definitely get your pre-orders in for set nine with alec he's going to give you the best prices but time is running out there's less than three weeks until the set comes out so definitely definitely get those in next up got to give a shout out to Daylon mac tournament of power Las Vegas, February 21st weekend, going to be the most hype three days of Dragon Ball Super this year outside of maybe Worlds. If you're on the fence about going, please consider going. It's going to be amazing, I promise you. And then finally, guys, if you're looking to level up your game, 3XG Patreon, links for everything down in the description. So let's move on and talk about these six cards. Let's talk about Super Combos. So... Super combos are a four of in every deck. They're what we call a staple. And if you're not playing them, as somebody used to say, you're bad. You're going to end up playing them. And until these six cards came out that are on your screen right now, you've only ever had one option in terms of color choice for your super combo. It's just you play the, the single color one. You don't really have too much of another option. Unless like you're maybe like Beerus with like Hellas. But even then, that's a single color super combo. So dual color super combos, especially these ones with their varied effects, have ridiculous implications on deck building. They either give leaders that were desperately needing extra tools or different tools, they gain access to those tools. It, they have insane combo potential with cards you probably already were playing, or they allow you to branch into a second, third, or in some crazy cases, even a fourth color. More so than the rares, more so than the super rares, and I can guarantee you probably more than even the secret rares, these cards will have the longest lasting impact on the competitive metagame because like shock lands and magic, they enable extra colors, which means more cards, which means you have access to more options uh, in the long run. And that applies for not only the competitive players, but the casual players. So for the rest of this video, I kind of just want to like, you know, generally walk through some of the different super combos give you some ideas of what you know might be possible with it and see if you know where that takes us the, you know uh you can go the sky is the limit with these things honestly i even i don't even know all the crazy deck building possibilities that these cards open up but i do want to highlight some of them here for you guys so first off let's talk about android 18 bionic blitz if your leader card is blue or green, when you combo with this card from your hand, your opponent chooses a card and puts it on the bottom of their deck. So this is a hand destruction super combo, and it is part green. So when you think green plus hand destruction, Lord Slug has to be the first thing that comes to your mind, especially now that the Boogeyman Mercenary Tau is banned. Slug is already getting quite a lot of hype going into set 9, and Bionic Blitz just adds to his arsenal. And usually Slug is a mono green deck. Some variations I've seen splash yellow, some variations I've seen splash blue. But yeah, this card basically makes it so that it's super easy to streamline and splash into blue for various different cards, most notably Sensu Bean. So Sensu Bean is obviously one of the most important cards ever uh, printed in this game. It's probably the best blue card ever printed, not even close. So it gives you obviously defense for what is normally the rockiest part of, of uh, Slug's early game. Uh, and then it also gives you much needed play extension in the mid to late game, which will be super invaluable to him. So basically having Bionic Blitz in your deck gives you easy access to Sensu Beam, which gives you easy access to other things. Since you're already a hand control deck, you can consider a card like Hidden Potential. If you guys haven't seen the impact of this card, it was run heavily at PBG Orlando. It's really, really good. And green leaders that can leverage it to help stabilize their early to mid game and lock down their opponents in the late game, like a leader like Lord Slug, then Hidden Potential, I think, is a pretty big uh, welcome, even if it's just a cyborg card. And again, playing Bionic Blitz just gives you access to the card, which is super, super awesome. Being in blue also, you gain access to an arrival card, Sun Goku and Sun Gohan, Saiyans of Earth. This is great because... Uh, being green, Slug doesn't really have many floodgate options, so when he's faced with cards like, say, SS4, Heartfelt Plea on turn 2 or turn 3, he has very few ways to deal with it, naturally it being mono green uh, traditionally. So having Sun Goku and Sun Gohan gives you an easy way to pop the, uh, the SS4, and it also gives you a little bit of hand control as well, which is you know synergistic with what the deck is already doing. So you get all three of the cards I just mentioned very easily. You know, you only have to pay like a 10 card blue package, including the super combos. It's super, super easy to splash this. 
uh, into the slug deck, and it fits basically perfectly. And if you really want to go even heavier with the, the blue into the deck, or even heavier with the memes into the deck, you could play something like, say, Ultra Instinct Sun Goku. I mean, you're already playing the Arrival, why not? Like, I, the point is, I'm trying to explain to you guys that there are as a lot of things you can do just because you're playing Bionic Blitz. She makes everything easier. All these dual color cards make everything easier when it comes to deck building. So, now let's look at Zamasu, Sacred Disbelief. This is the blue-yellow one. If your leader is blue or yellow, when you combo with this card, choose up to one of your opponent's leader cards or battle cards to switch it to rest mode. This card is amazing. This card, two for ones all day, and is great for decks such as Android 21. Uh, because traditionally, like Slug, Android 21 is this like you know mostly green, sometimes blue-green deck where she doesn't really have any floodgates, she doesn't have Topo, she doesn't have Flying Nimbus. So... When she's faced against a deck like Baby, uh, she doesn't really have many options. That's one of the main reasons why 21 didn't really ever take off in set 8 as a mainstream deck. It's because she just can't beat Baby. Uh, she just doesn't have the options. She's just not in the color combination for the options. So Zamasu's Sacred Disbelief gives you a 2 for 1 where you can basically block a leader swing and tap down a, a, a clone token or a battle card to alleviate pressure early on, which is really, really great. And on top of that, the existence of this card in your deck forces your opponent to want to attack with the leader first over battle cards for fear of losing the draw power. And what card is already in the color that is a floodgate that we desperately need that punishes you for swinging with a leader first? Flying Nimbus. So Zamasu plus Flying Nimbus together is a really, really strong combination. And having Zamasu in the deck allows you to easily splash this card. You can also now easily splash Chompa the Trickster. You don't have to settle for just UI Goku or, and or Vegeta the Cruel as your counterplay option in Android 21. You now have access to Chompa the Trickster relatively easily. So now you have all three of the really good counterplays for a deck that is trying to control the game until it can ramp into a finisher like Violent Predator. Additionally, you have even more protection against aggro decks like Baby because you now have access to SS Broly All Out Assault. So we already have we already had Goku Gohan as our previous arrival card. Well, Broly does a lot of those things, but better, and he also slightly adds to our yellow hook account, which makes it so that the Flying Nimbus play and the Champa play are even more consistent. So yeah, this card is a huge pickup for the deck, and it's again all made possible because of Sacred Disbelief. Again, since we're already playing all yellow and we are an Android leader and we are a control deck, we need an obvious finisher. So before Violent Predator, the big knock on it is it doesn't do anything against multicolor decks. How does it finish it off multicolor decks? Well, you don't even need to play Violent Predator now since you're, you know, you've got the Zamasu, you've got the Nimbus, you've got the Champa, and you're already playing the Broly. Why not just go for Cell? Like it's really easy to successor this off of a Broly, which is made possible by again the super combo. So it's very easy now to slot all of these things into the existing 21 shell and transition a normal two color deck that struggled, you know, at floodgating the game into a three color control deck that has not only it has its basically its two biggest knocks against it addressed. It now can answer aggro and it actually has a potent finisher. So next up, let's talk about Dr. Giro. Dr. Giro is the green-yellow super combo. When you combo with it, you choose a green or yellow battle card with energy cost of four less in your deck and put it in your drop area. So obviously this is intended to go with the cell leader from the set. And, you know, most of you guys, when you saw this, the first thing you probably thought of was, well, Great Ape, Sun Goku, Saiyan Instinct. So, I mean, the card is already really good. You guys already know it. It's not getting any cheaper, guys. I'm sorry. I, I wish it was. But like, this is the obvious combo that everyone's going to play. You might not necessarily be in the Cell Leader um, because obviously Dr. Zero outside of this combo is really good with the actual chain. But, you know, for the rest of the slide, we're just basically going to talk about other crazy cool combos with Zero. So, yeah, this is the obvious one. You combo defensively. Your turn. You untap. You pay two. You warp this card. You draw two. It's obviously, you know, it's not going to get much better than that. Nine times out of ten, this is what you're going to do. But there is some other really cool things you can do with it even at the casual level so sun goku path to godhood to get the turn two dawn of divinity is a pretty cool play uh you know it's a lot of pressure turn two if you're playing the yellow gohan leader for example you can burst you can use jiro to pick up the missing pieces and get all of them into the drop right away so that way you can very easily go into dawn of divinity and get in for some double strike dual attack critical action as well as offering so yeah really really cool Will this break the mold? Will you play this at a competitive level? No, probably not, but it's a pretty cool deck, right? It's a pretty cool idea. 
So speaking of other cool ideas, if you're playing Surge Coup, you can actually use this card with Familial Bonds. And I know what you're saying. Well, you can only get yellow or green cards, right? But yeah, well, what if you get a red-green like Saiyan or like a red yellow Saiyan off of this. So yeah, this is, uh, we'll set up some familial bond targets in Surge Q, which is pretty sweet. Uh, specifically, you can use it in tandem with Dependable Brother Son Gohan. So you can revive your burst attack Gohan with familial bonds or whatever. And then you can use Dr. Jiro to drop off the four cost uh, family Kamehameha uh, Goten plus Goku plus Gohan super rare from set seven then evolve into dependable brother son Gohan draw some cards and then you will get a triple striker on board that if your opponent counter plays the turn you play it they're going to crit two life so it's a pretty cool combo again it's a pretty interesting setup um will it be competitive probably not but it's still a really good setup right it's a really cool setup for you guys to try out your locals uh it's probably something you probably hadn't considered and then also speaking of things you haven't considered if you're playing a deck like say maybe surge piccolo even say cell you can just use dr zero mid combat to put cards into your drop air to make negative energy overflow dragon balls cheaper and that is a really really easy board wipe that your opponent might not see coming like you might be t uh, tapped out you can just draw to block an attack or multiple draws to block an attack and all of a sudden these dragon balls are super cheap you get to blow up your opponent's board during their turn they weren't expecting it and then you were the coast is clear basically to resolve a finisher and win the game so next up is Beerus Divine Obliterator. This is the red-blue super combo. It was I feel like it works best with the Surge deck and Invoker because obviously that's what it's designed to do on your opponent's turn. It untaps a red-blue multicolor energy. Invoker only works with red-blue multicolor energy. So like this is the obvious, duh. But like there are some pretty uh, interesting interactions that you can still use this card for outside of uh, the obvious. So like let's consider the rebooted Beerus Leader, for example. You could split the super combos, Beerus, uh, Divine Obliterator plus Hellas in the deck. You can use Beerus Divine Obliterator to untap red blue energy for Sensu Beans, uh, to open up energy for Dimension Magic, and things like that that you're already going to be playing in Beerus. But since you split the super combos with Hellas, you now have access to playing Divine Obliterator, untap energy, and then using Hellas, draw two cards, Arrival, Champ of Beerus, Capricious Gods, and blow up one of your opponent's guys on their turn that they probably were not expecting. So there, again, Crazy deck building potential, all because of this Beerus Divine Obliterator. It allows for a really weird three color blue, green, red deck with like a god leader that normally would not have been possible without this super combo. Speaking of things that would, you know, might not be possible at the super combo, Surge Q. I mean, it's already good as it is. Grade 8 Bardock Raiders Warcry is already way too good, and it's already way, you know, it's not going to get any cheaper like the apes again. I'm sorry. But yeah, like if you're tapped out with Surge Coup, you can be like, all right, they swing at me, Beerus Divine Obliterator, untap my energy on defense, Sensu Bean, Grade 8 Bardock Raiders Warcry. So this card is basically like a mini Zeno button when you're already tapped out and allows a, you know, a red, yellow, or a blue, yellow leader, I don't know, Kefla, for example, to take advantage of Grade 8, Bard uh, grade eight Bardock Raiders Warcry. Warcry. So yeah, really, really strong super combo. And again, it's a mini Zeno button, which means for those of you guys who are Hercule enthusiasts, that Isaiah, I know that's you. Ryan, I know that's you. Uh, if you guys really want to take Hercule for a spin at a casual level again, and you're missing the fact that you just don't have button anymore, well, Beerus is there to take care of you. Again, probably not the most competitive deck, but like the, the, the fact that these cards exist allow you to naturally, you know, bring back older decks or revamp decks or things like that. The point, again, is deck building is crazy now. And then next up, we have Nappa Demolition Man. This is probably the best super combo next to Zamasu. I think it's I think this card's insane, actually. So if your leader's red or green, and when you combo with this card from your hand, you play it. Uh, obviously, this card just screams Surge Broly, which again is another leader that didn't really need much help. So you combo with Nappa, you draw a card with your Surge Broly, and then it comes into play. The best part about Nappa is that when you combo with him, he comes into play, which means you get to combo with him again. So he's basically choosing to play four Nappas is like the equivalent of playing eight super combos. They just don't draw, but you draw them in twos. So as long as your opponent isn't going to play removal to get rid of it, you basically get to play this card, combo with it, draw a card off of your Broly leader, and then play it uh, onto the field. And then when they swing at you next turn, you could just do it again. Just insane, insane value. Speaking of insane value, insane drawing, Freeze Army Healing Pod, got to talk about it. So um, 
as far as I'm aware of, as of the filming of this video, the ruling on Frieza Army Healing Pod and comboing cards is so this Nappa will go from the combo area to the drop because cards in the combo area go to the drop at the end of the combo step, but then Nappa triggers in your drop and then comes back into play. So that would mean that it is a green battle card that was played from your drop area, so you get to draw a card. As if Surge Bully didn't need to draw more cards, this interaction will let you draw even more cards and push it to the limit. Speaking of pushing the card to the limit, Nappa, Demolition Man, can be used with few Zamasu Deity's Wrath. If you were upset that you bought out Deity's Wrath and you bought out the wrong Zamasu, you're probably still fine because you can play Goku Black for, th for two. He is a three drop. Nappa is a two drop. Boom. Instant five drop. It's pretty good, right? And I, I almost, again, almost every deck can play this. Really, really, really strong synergy. 20k indestructible. This card isn't going anywhere unless your opponent is playing uh surge coup so yeah really 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 strong interaction speaking of really strong interactions if your opponent blows up your board and leaves you with your you know piccolo assimilated ability you don't have bond two cool nappa's got your back yes you won't get it on the first combo step but you can use nappa combo him he comes into play now your piccolo assimilated ability is online for the next swing say you're their baby they have multiple swings it's really really strong there and then finally, you have some really wacky shenanigans build. Somebody could pop, it, it might be possible to be like, I'm going to Nappa combo, put him into play, uneasy line Sun Goku, negate the attack, pick up my Nappa, Nappa. Like, there's, there's, there's some really weird synergies <laughs> with this card, is what I'm trying to point out. So, this is a very, very good super combo. It doesn't look like it because at first glance, it's like, well, why would I want a 10k attacker? That's not really the point. The point is there's just some really crazy shenanigans in terms of what you can do with looping him and getting multiple super combos out of him. He's really strong. Uh, and then finally, it brings us to Whis Celestial Moderator. Obviously, the one that everybody's going to think of when they read this card, because if your leader is red or yellow, you get to shrink a leader card or a battle card for minus 10k, I believe, for the turn. Oh, nope, it's just a battle card for minus 10k for the turn. And obviously that just screams cooler mill. It just screams it because you get the minus effect to mill them and draw a card. Uh, yeah, just really, really good there. Um, so that's, again, the one that you're all thinking about. So we Celestial Moderator, you can just use it to two for one your opponent. Your opponent swings with a leader. You out combo it with Celestial Moderator. You shrink a battle card so that way you don't only have to block that one. And that will force your leader skill to trigger. It's also red, so that means it's half the cost for your arrival for cooler tyrannical assault, which will again draw you a card, or I'm sorry, mill you that mill them a card, and then you know it'll also trigger the leader as well, and you'll get to shrink things. So just the 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 synergy between cooler with the Wee super combo is just really really high. There's just a lot of synergy with the Wee super combo in general. None of it is you know particularly amazing, but or in terms of like like creative deck building, but it's just good, right? And to you know, further drive that point home, Beerus, no holds barred. So we Celestial Moderator shrinks anything by 10K, Beerus kills anything 30K or less. So what this means is we Celestial Moderator with Beerus no holds barred in hand kills everything. It kills literally everything that is not a, a, a 45K ultimate. It just, that's it. Like as if, again, Beerus no holds barred needed to be better. Like. It's like if there's a one takeaway you can take away from this video it's cards that were already really good and expensive are probably going to get even more expensive and even more good so yeah th this is a really really sick interaction is probably the most common one outside of cooler that most people will probably think of but something you're probably also not thinking about is that celestial moderator denies heartfelt plea um if you're afraid of heartfelt plea if you're in one of the either the red or the yellow uh colors it might be worth your while to consider maybe playing one to two copies of Celestial Moderator as your super combo. Obviously, your opponent needs a red battle card with 25k or more power. If you shrink that on their awakening turns because of a careless swing or they didn't think about it and got greedy or, or whatever have you, you can deny a heartfelt play, which is huge. When your super combo basically says your opponent can't play SS4 Sun Goku, which is one of the best, if not the best, five drop in the game, yeah, it's, it's a really, really big deal. Uh, and then finally, obviously, it has pretty good synergy with the cards that will restand and are able to attack active battle cards. You can basically, again, two for one. If you're opponent, if you're playing Gogeta for whatever reason, again at a casual level, I don't know if the deck's still relevant. You'd have to ask Frisco for that one. Um, you can use Whis to shrink uh, a card to make it super easy to kill with a card like Gogeta Unparalleled Fusion Warrior, which is pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, again. 
The whole point of the, this video was to try to illustrate some of the crazy combos and interactions that these super combos have. Again, three colors, man. They're, like These cards just make three colors so, so, so good. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for me on this video today, guys. Hopefully, if you guys enjoyed it, consider leaving a like. If you really enjoyed it and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. It helps us out a ton here at 3XG Productions. And with that, enjoy your weekend, guys. Okay, bye!